Radio and Becky on the new Anglia allotment. Yes, over the next few months, we're going to be regular visitors here to the Anglia allotment to meet some of the characters and find out why there's been a bit of a grow-your-own revival. Join us later in the programme. But first, more than 20 years after her murder, could police in Britain and Kenya finally be closing in on the killer of Julie Ward? The 28-year-old from Bury St Edmunds died during a trip to the Masai Mara Game Reserve in 1988. Now the Metropolitan Police have launched a new investigation and after a trip to Kenya with them, Julie's father John hopes that years of fighting for the truth could at last pay off. Victoria Webb has this report. For 22 years, John Ward has been trying to get justice for his daughter. He's travelled to Kenya more than 100 times, spending thousands of pounds in his search to find Julie's killer. Now at last, he says he's receiving cooperation from the authorities in an attempt to solve the case. The difference between this team and the team that were there before is it's quite extraordinary. I mean, these people work morning till night. Uh, they're computerised, they take laptop statements, uh, it's, uh, they took a forensic man out with them, uh, and they never stop. Last month, John returned from Kenya with a team from the Metropolitan Police, which has begun a fresh investigation. Judy Ward had travelled to the Masai Mara Game Reserve to photograph wildlife. On the 4th of September 1988, she became separated from her friend after their jeep broke down. The last time she was seen alive was on the 6th of September, travelling back to a campsite. On the 8th, her friends reported her missing. Two days later, her father flew out to Kenya and found her remains himself on the 13th. Kenyan authorities initially claimed Julie had been killed by wild animals, but an inquest ruled she'd been murdered. John has always believed there was a cover-up over her death. It's been a constant battle for you over the years to get the various authorities to actually work together, hasn't it? That's exactly right. The latest effort is really based on the will of Scotland Yard to get to the bottom of it and, if you like, put to rights what went wrong before. The Metropolitan Police says that officers are receiving positive cooperation from the Kenyan authorities in the investigation. John believes the case could now hinge on the advances in DNA technology and that samples taken more than 20 years ago could hold the key. Kerry-Ann Millick is a forensic expert at Anglia Ruskin University. New techniques have actually, actually allowed for smaller and smaller samples to be being required for the extraction of DNA. After two murder trials which resulted in defendants being acquitted, it's hoped there could soon be strong evidence that will bring to an end this 22-year-old mystery. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Bury St Edmunds. Now, yesterday it was Labour. Today it was the turn of the Conservative Party to launch its election manifesto. Under the slogan, we're all in this together, David Cameron told party members that government alone couldn't produce a quick fix to Britain's problems. Instead, promising people the chance to shape their own future. Now, Labour and the Lib Dems dismissed it, saying it offered nothing to support economic recovery and would leave people to fend for themselves. Our political correspondent Matthew Hudson reports on day eight of campaign. 2010. Giving power to the people while taking it from Labour. That's the message David Willits was championing in Norwich today. The Shadow University and Skills Minister was headlining the Conservative Party's manifesto launch here in the East. Parents who want to create their own school are going to give constituents power to recall their MPs if they've been sleazy and corrupt. We want to give local people much greater power over planning. We want to give individuals greater power to get their own home and own their own home. These are really important issues for people in East Anglia. It didn't take long for Labour to respond. This was School Secretary Ed Balls in Northampton this afternoon. The Tories are saying they'll cut the deficit faster and put jobs at risk. They want to cut national insurance, but they're going to pay for that by huge cuts to support for families and our public services. I think it would be really the wrong choice for our country. It's local Labour MPs like these who'll be hoping voters share Mr Ball's view. Their constituencies are top targets for the Tories, all well within the 7% swing needed for an outright Conservative victory. 
This is Corby, current Labour majority, around 1,500. The kind of seat the Conservatives need to march triumphantly through if they're going to form the next government. But on the day their manifesto was launched, no really senior Conservative figures were here or in any other constituency in our region. So are the Conservatives confident in Anglia or overconfident? That's something the Lib Dems can't be accused of. Party leader Nick Clegg was in Northampton yesterday, while today he was visiting a plastics manufacturer in Luton. David Cameron seems to think that it's just his turn to inherit a spell in government rather than really earn it. Very difficult to trust the Conservatives when they have done nothing in their manifesto to spell out how they're going to put money back, back in people's pockets. Also launching their manifesto today was UKIP. Former leader Nigel Farage is breaking with convention by standing in Buckingham against the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko. And it's becoming increasingly clear that the choice the British public are being offered here is not for a change of government, but for a change of management. But can these manifesto launches lead to significant political breakthroughs? For UKIP, that means turning their strong Euro election showing into general election votes. For the Tories, it's putting their policies to the test in government. One thing's for sure, on May the 6th, you will have the power to decide. Well, our political correspondent Matthew Hudson is in Bedford for us tonight. So, Matt, why Bedford then? Well, it's lovely down here on the embankment and because Bedford is number eight on a list of 13 seats that the Conservatives need to win in our region if they're to take power. So what happened here five years ago? Well, Labour's Patrick Hall won with a majority of around three and a half thousand. The Conservatives second and the Liberal Democrats coming in third. Labour got 42% of the vote, the Conservatives 34, so they need a swing of around 4% to take it this time around. Now, 4% wouldn't be anywhere near enough for them to win an overall majority nationally. To do that, they need 6.9%, and so that means taking seats in our region, including Stevenage, Ipswich, Waveney, and Northampton North. So what have we got to look forward to tomorrow? Well, the Liberal Democrats are launching their manifesto. And as for the political big hitter alert, that has to be Chancellor of the Exchequer, Alistair Darling, who's visiting Mercedes-Benz in Bletchley. And we look forward to all of that, Matt. Thank you very much indeed. We'll let you get back to the delightful evening in Bedford. Well, uh, more election coverage coming up later tonight on ITV. Here's Julie Etchingham.